Uh, my name is Mark Phillips. I'm the safety chair, land use chair, parliamentarian of the Alliance, and I'm a resident of the 12th floor of this building. I'm also the co-captain of the 200 block Eddy Street Neighborhood Watch. Um, among a lot of other things I'm doing. We'll go around and introduce ourselves. Dennis Eisner, Administrative Officer of the Alliance. Denise Dory, TV producer for Bayback. Susan Bryan, treasurer of Alliance for Better District 6. I'm a resident and I just live down the street. I live next door. Yeah. My name is Krista Gaeta, I'm the deputy director at Tenderloin Housing Club. I'm Lauren Bell, Reentry Services Manager with Adult Probation. I'm Marty Fay, I'm the deputy chief of Adult Probation I have the distinction of having moved into the neighborhood about four years after Marvis Phillips. <laughs> I'm David Lyle. I'm my director of the, the Alliance here. Uh, Joseph Thomas, uh, community media. Larry Williamson, a lieutenant here, and another co captain of the Trinity Block, Jim Morgan. I'm also a member of the director board for TMC. I'm the secretary and of the Why don't you give yourself a Patrick Flanny with the words of Thank you all for coming. Our ground rules are on the back of the agenda. And they are, and we ask you to please turn off the pagers, cell phones, electronic devices, and anything else you have that beeps as we are filming this for YouTube. And I guess we're going to film this for Denise's video. Yeah, show. parts of it, yeah. I was um, going yeah. This event will be videotaped. If you do wish to be on the video, stay behind the camera. No hackling or name calling, please. We want you to create a safe environment which every participant feels free to speak by reserving any negativity. When you do speak, speak responsibly, emphasize the positive. Please do not interrupt another speaker or engage in side conversation or other distracting behavior when others are speaking. This event is sponsored by a nonprofit, so there will be no political campaigning inside the community room. If you want to talk about politics, we ask you to do it in the hallway. Um, the other two we don't need because we don't have door prizes, we don't have any food. We do have sodas up here and water, which you can um, help yourself to. Is there any additions to the agenda? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I motion to approve the agenda. I second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Thank you. The Alliance for Better District 6 is a membership organization. We uh, do all of our funding resources from what we make for membership dues and our bottle. And um, we ask that people consider joining because we are an excellent organization. We do not take any government funding or any foundation funding or any corporate funding to interfere with our work that we do within the neighborhood. And we've been successful at this for <coughs> years. So I ask you if you want to join, we have membership forms up here. Also have a donation jar. We pay things to do day-to-day -day expenses, printing costs, and other things by our donation jar. We ask for people who can give, give. Let's not a matter of how much you do what you can you do what is comfortable for yourself. No, we appreciate it. Does anybody have any 
questions about the alliance. Give it a couple of minutes for that draw to go around. Don't distract anybody. That's why we've got this one. <coughs> by the Superior Court. We also have an investigations division uh, in which we conduct pre-sentence investigations on any individual who either, who either pleads guilty or is found guilty by a jury in the uh, Superior Court of uh, San Francisco. We employ almost 140 total staff, 100 of which are sworn peace officers, probation officers who supervise individuals in our community. and. Uh, one of the biggest needs that uh, we have in being able to effectively supervise our clients is uh, housing. And uh, the reason we're here today is we are about to uh, get into a venture with uh, Tenderloin Housing Clinic in which we will be, uh, there will be a master lease of rooms. There's some renovations going on as we speak. And I have a couple, a couple of uh, people here who are going to be able to provide you with details to uh, what that's all about. In terms of the population that we have under supervision in the, in the general district of the Tenderloin, we have roughly 500 people already on supervision here. So we have officers in this area uh, just about every day of the, of the year. So if you have any questions, I'm, I'm available. Good evening, everybody. Once again, I'm Lauren Bell with the Adult Probation Department, and I just first wanted to thank Marvis and also Mr. Nolte for inviting us to come out and meet with everybody here. Um, Marty gave you kind of some overview of the department. I just want to talk a little bit more about the services. I think traditionally everybody in a probation department thinks about kind of core probation supervision services, which really is the core of our services. But over the last several years, we've really expanded out into a lot of different reentry services that are focused on kind of self-sufficiency. So the whole department is very much focused on accountability, making sure that somebody is responsible for uh, what they've done, for what they've allegedly done, but also giving them an opportunity to change and grow and become all of the greatness that they want to become. So in addition to the housing project, we have a full range of services. Our kind of hallmark service is something called the Community Assessment and Services Center. It's a one-stop reentry center. Uh, on site, we have case management, we have employment services, we have um, anger management services, cognitive behavioral services, um, access to other housing outside of the Drake. Um, we have uh, partnerships with the Department of Public Health with the Human Services Agency, with the Department of Child Support Services. So a collective of services helping somebody make better decisions, move in a more positive direction, and most importantly, to stabilize themselves so they can permanently exit the criminal justice system. So this is really, this, this next phase of services we're really excited about, working with Tenderloin Housing Clinic, hopefully working with other members of the community to really kind of build something for the men and women uh, that come through our services so that it can build towards a better future. So we're really excited about this and I will hand it over next to THC to talk more about the project and we're happy to answer any questions that anybody has afterwards. Thank you. 
Good evening. My name is Christy Gata. I'm the Deputy Director of Tenderloin Housing Clinic. Uh, we're really excited to be partnering with the San Francisco Adult Probation Department to operate the Drake Hotel. So probably most of you are really familiar with Tenderloin Housing Clinic. We operate 16 single room occupancy hotels in San Francisco, many of them being in the Tenderloin. So we've been doing this for roughly 16 years. Um, but our work has been primarily permanent housing, so this is our first transitional housing project and we're really excited about it. So, um, like Lauren and Marty said, it'll be at the Drake Hotel, which is right across the street. It's 60 units of transitional housing. Um, we will be staffing the building 24 hours a day, so we'll have on-site desk clerks. We're putting in a very robust surveillance system. Um, during the week, we'll have a program manager there, a property manager there, and we'll have two housing planning specialists. And their primary goal is to work with the folks that are there to find permanent housing at the end. Um, so it says on the sheet, drug treatment program. It's actually not a licensed drug treatment program, but it is a clean and sober program. And so we'll really be working with people who are committed to a clean and sober life um, and want this opportunity to work with people more intensively to figure out barriers to permanent housing. So looking at employment services, looking at getting income, all of those things, and really working to put them on lists and finding permanent housing at the end. Um, so we're really excited about all the improvements we're making. We've seen a little bit being done outside. We've painted some of it. We're going to paint the rest of it eventually. We're doing a lot of great stuff inside, making some really great program space in the basement. Um, so I'm really hopeful that our staff will be here, be a really great presence in the neighborhood. If you have questions, if things come up, you can really talk to us. We want to hear, we want to know. But we're really hoping that we can be an improvement to this block and really contribute to a great residential neighborhood. There's a lot of supporting houses sites on this block in particular, and we're hoping to really join that group and um, you know make a positive difference on this street. So again, Mike, Lauren, and Marty said, if you guys have any questions, Please let us know. Yeah. Okay. Um, with the shortage of housing already happening in our in, a, in this community, how are you going to find permanent housing for anybody in this, with this with this problem going on already? You just asked the million dollar question. So that is what <laughs> this is going to be one of our this is going to be one of our very very big challenges. Well, oh, with that, that word building came out of her lips, yeah. and I, I accept that. But here's another point I want to ask. People that already live down here don't have no homes. And, and how, what are you going to do for those people? So many of the people that we will be putting into the drink live here down. So they are the people, I mean, you, you, they no, are the folks that you're talking about. Are they, they the are, prisoners? Are these, none of them are prisoners. They're all on probation. They're on community, community supervision. Well, just the same. So you said they already live in this community. Many of them live in San Francisco. Well, all of them live in San Francisco. So they are, and all of them will come are homeless now. So that's what that's one of the things we are doing for the folks that are homeless. So we're going to provide the 60-unit transitional housing, and our goal will be to try to find permanent exits. There are permanent exits at the end, but you're right. There's a shortage. It's a really sad situation. Huge that's shortage. why we're doing this transitional housing is because. Most folks are waiting in shelters or they're on the street while they're waiting for housing. And so our goal will put folks into a more stable environment so that while they're waiting, while they're doing the applications, you know, they're working on other things so that when they're when they're done with their 12 month stay, they're in permanent housing. Please, just one more yeah, question. Sure. Just one more question. Um, why did you choose this neighborhood with, with already negative connotations of drugs and, and um, possibility for violence? Why did you choose this as a transitional area? Sure, that's a really good question. A lot of it has to do with available, affordable housing stock. And the Tenderloin has a high concentration of uh, SRO hotels. And so we were able to get an SRO hotel that had, that was that something that we could you know, afford and that we thought was actually a very good quality hotel. It's a really great hotel. And I actually think there's been a lot of improvements on this street. I actually think the improvements of Bodecker are really great, and I do think that there's a huge community of nonprofit housing here, to, and you know the alliance is here. So I think that there is a lot of positive things happening. Great. Sure. Uh, kind, of, kind of piggybacking on sure. this. Uh, you said it's not going to be a drug treatment. Just, right. So there will be no proleys that have like drug problems or anything coming in. Well. Because like I said, we have a big drug problem in this neighborhood, sure. and that's one thing we're trying to you know, not bring any more in. Sure. Of course. Really good point. Um, so, so I can't. So yeah, let me answer his question, and then I. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. I'll be right to you in a moment. Um, so, 
We will be taking folks who are committed to being clean and sober. I cannot guarantee that folks won't relapse. I can't guarantee that there won't be issues. Especially down here. That's something that lots of folks do struggle with in this neighborhood and outside of this neighborhood. Um, we will be working very closely with them to work on those issues. There's going to be a lot of support on site. Also, every person who's in our, our building is also connected to an adult probation department funded case manager off-site. So that's at the CAS, which is at? Five, six, four, six. Yes, on 6th Street. And so they will be going there regularly to meet with their case manager. And if issues of addiction or other issues come up, we'll be immediately communicating with their case manager and we'll be giving them options for and detox treatment. Officer. And, excuse me, Marty, I forgot. And their probation officer. So that's actually, they've got a nice trifecta of people that they're working with. So we have the benefit of having probation officers, APD funded case management, and a housing planning specialist with a program director on site to work with people who are struggling with addiction and other issues. What's going to be? Oh, I actually think that I have to go to this gentleman and then we'll go to you. Thanks for keeping my You are welcome. It's all you. Thank you. All right. The question I want to ask is um, say, like, for example, um, okay, say you get people in transitional housing, right? Yeah. Say if they go out, um, well, kind of like, how do you say it? Um, going to be done to replace all those units of affordable housing over there? Because a lot, there, a lot of these SROs around here are being preyed upon, where they're going to, all, you know, they're not being used for affordable housing anymore. We're losing affordable housing all the time. They're, oh, let's look at all these SROs. We can, you know, there's just, everybody wants to do things with our SROs. You know, we're just like slim pickings. But I just want to know, what's going to be done to replace the housing that's being taken away from the Drake? Yeah. What happened to the people? That's a good idea. What happens to the people? So no one has to leave. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going I'm to answer your question, and I think I can tie your comments in there, which yeah. is that the folks that are there do not have to leave. So we will have 18, 19 permanent tenants in the building. Their rents will remain the same. Some of them are getting remodeled units. Actually, I'm hoping that we can make the building a lot better for them. And I think a lot of them have actually are actually expressed some excitement of us coming in because of the processes we're putting in place because of the improvements that we're putting in place. I so mean, what's where the rents That will be? stay. Um, it's whatever their rents are now. We're not setting the rents, so they're going to stay they're staying. affordable? They have rent control. We're not changing them. So they will remain at the same rate, and they will actually, many of them will actually get better units. Um, there is no plan to immediately replace 60 units of affordable housing. I can tell you the Tenderloin Housing Clinic is fixing up the Baldwin Hotel right now and bringing on 886 units for chronically homeless folks at 30% of your income. So I'm very excited about that. So I think there is a lot of effort to get more affordable housing, more support of affordable housing in the neighborhood. I think the mayor, the mayor announced 500 units this year. I think he's going to make another announcement tomorrow just about the progress we're making in that. So there is some work we're doing.